In this tutorial, we will perform a nonlinear contact analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This type of analysis is critical to evaluate the effects of interaction between two or more components which are directly in contact with each other. We will perform nonlinear contact analysis on a rack and pinion assembly to evaluate the displacements and stresses produced in both the components. The displacement and equivalent stress results will be visualized during post-processing. Let's get right into it. To get a copy of the FEM file used in this video, feel free to contact me via email. My contact details are provided in the about section of this channel. The first step is to create a material and property for all the components in the model. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the FEM file is imported in Hypermesh, two meshed components are visible in the model browser. Let's start by creating a material. Provide a name to it. With card image as mat1, we will enter the default mechanical properties of steel in unit system Newton, millimeter, ton, second. Now create a new property for the rack component and provide a name to it. As we are using solid elements, change the card image to P solid. Let's select the steel material in proper selection box. The pinion will also be made of the same material. Hence, we can duplicate this property and rename it for the pinion component. The material and properties have now been created. We need to assign these properties to respective components. For the rack component, select the rack solid property in property selection box. For the pinion component, we will select the pinion solid property. The material gets assigned automatically. To define the locations for force and constraint application, we will create RBE2 rigid elements. Create a new component to store these rigid elements. Now open the RBE2 tool from model ribbon. Let's switch the dependent selector to faces. We will select the bottom face of the rack. Select all 6 degrees of freedom and create the rigid element. And now we can start with the most important step of this analysis, that is the contact interface definition. We will create a non-linear frictionless contact between the rack and pinion. Additional contact settings will also be defined to get the required outputs during post-processing of the analysis results. Let's start by enabling the contact browser in Hypermesh. To define contact interfaces, we will use the contact browser located in the model ribbon. Select the rack and pinion components. Right click, auto contact. Let's change the proximity tolerance to 5 mm. With all other settings as default, create the contact. We can review the contact by pressing the Q key on keyboard. The blue entities are master and the red are slave. As we want the rack component to be the master in this analysis, we need to swap the master and slave entity selections for this contact. Switch the clearance option to real value and enter the clearance value as zero. This means that the contact is activated right at the start of the analysis. Let's set the discretization to surface to surface. Lastly, to update the contact stiffness continuously, select the track as continuous sliding. The frictionless contact between the rack and the pinion has been defined. The nonlinear contact has now been defined. Now we can start setting up the boundary conditions for this nonlinear contact analysis. The pinion will be fixed at its current position in space and a force will be applied on the lower face of the rack. 
the contact between the two components will prevent the rack from moving and cause displacements and stresses to be produced in both the components. Let's start by creating single point constraints at required locations in the model. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. We will use the BCs option from Analyze ribbon. Select the constraints sub option. The movement of the rack along all degrees of freedom except the X direction needs to be restricted. To do this, select the master node of the rigid element. Uncheck DOF1 and create the constraint. Now switch the selector to faces. To lock the pinion, we need to restrict movement of this internal face of the pinion along all 6 degrees of freedom. Create the constraints. Exit the BCs tool by clicking on it again. Let's create a new load collector for force. Open the force panel from the loads option. Now select the master node of the rigid element in the selection box. We will apply a force of magnitude 3000 Newton along positive X direction. Create the force vector. Once the force is created, we can exit the panel area. To couple the loads and constraints into a nonlinear analysis, create a new load step. Let's change the analysis type to nonlinear static. Select the SPC load collector in SPC selection box. Select the force load collector in load selection box. To define the nonlinear analysis run settings, right click and create edit the NLparam card. We will specify the initial increment as 0.1. Close the NLparam card. To output results for the nonlinear static analysis, we need to create the NL out card. By using the NINT option, we will instruct the solver to write results after every two load increments. We will keep all other settings as default. The nonlinear analysis is now ready for run. Let's export the solver deck in FEM file format. Create a new folder to save the file. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any issues during the solver run. Set export options to all and complete the export. We will copy the location of this file using the file explorer. To submit this job to the Optistrat solver, we will use the compute console application. Let's set the solver to Optistrat. In the input file selection box, select the FEM file we exported in the previous step. Click on run to launch the Optistruct solver. This may take some time to solve. The analysis is complete and we can view the results using Hyperview. Close the solver window and compute console. Let's create a new page in the same Hyperworks session. The client is automatically switched to Hyperview. We will open the model and results file from working directory. 
Select the FEM file in load model option. Select the corresponding H3D file in load results option. Apply the results. As we are not interested in viewing the results for the rigid element, hide the rigids component. Now open the contour panel. Apply the displacement results. We can play the animation by adjusting the view controls. The displacement contours are clearly visible. Similarly, we can also view the stress results. Set the averaging method to simple and apply the stress results. The maximum stress value is below the yield limit of our material. Hence, the rack and pinion is safe for use in this loading condition. We have successfully performed a nonlinear contact analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. And this is how we can perform a nonlinear contact analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.